Good morning. Welcome to the Midtown Bridge. We are so excited that you have joined with us this morning. So we are going to start by singing the blessing. So worship with us wherever you are. Oh, yeah. 
children and your children in His presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you He is with you He is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going and your weeping and rejoicing
there is none beside you open up my eyes and wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and leave me in your love to those around me build our life on you your firm foundation Well, good morning, Midtown Bridge family uh, and friends. This is Pastor Milton uh, coming to you from my home. Um, actually in one of the favorite rooms of our house, our family room, um, where I'm recording this message from. We decided to uh, call an audible in light of the uh, potential snowstorm. Who knows whether it's going to be a laughable uh, occasion or maybe we might actually get snow here in Atlanta. Uh, but we also want to give you a little bit, a little bit more margin back to spend with family uh, over this long weekend. So we pray uh, that you're making some um, getting rest, but also making some pretty cool memories with your loved ones uh, as, as we celebrate uh, this holiday weekend of Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Jr. and the impact the Lord allowed him to make uh, literally across the world. Um, I was thinking about that, just even just thinking about just even particular passage we're going to share uh, on today, uh, just about just how we as parents are called uh, to make an impact. Uh, in this room I'm sitting in now recording this message, uh, it's our family room. In this room, it functions as uh, a time where we watch movies and TV together. Uh, it functions as a, a room where we, a lot of laughter. It functions as at one point in time when my, my oldest daughter, my daughters were in gymnastics, it, it functions as a room where they could flip and practice their gymnastics. Uh, uh, even now they're into track, it's, it functions as a relay race room. Um, I mean, it's, it's a lot of life happens. Uh, in this space, um, and uh, when I think about it, there's there's a there's a um, some photos behind me. Uh, I'll show those to you. Uh, but those photos are a constant reminder of, of how fast time is flying, how life is fleeting. Uh, when I think about just those pictures when they were first captured, how young my daughters were versus how they've matured or they're maturing now, uh, I think about just the preciousness of life. And so as we continue in our revision series. Uh, this morning, uh, I want to call our attention back to Psalm 127, where we kicked off the year. Uh, we looked at verses 1 through 2. And today I want to call our attention to verses 3 through 5 of Psalm 127. So would you join me there? Uh, Psalm uh, 127, verses 3 through 5. And it reads, 
Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. Uh, this morning, as we examine this passage, I would like to examine it with this thought in mind. Aimed. Aimed. Let's pray. Father, I pray you'll give us ears to hear and hearts to receive what you're saying to us in this moment. Father, I pray that we'll honor you uh, with uh, just this time we have uh, in shepherding our loved ones, our family, our friends, uh, even our neighbors, those you've those young children you've brought into our sphere of influence. You have us to perhaps leave an indelible impression upon. So, God, give us wisdom. Make us wise stewards of these gifts. It's in Jesus name. Amen. Well, as I shared in the past up to this point, uh, our big idea for this series is uh, when God, when we let God take the pen, we truly start to win. When we let God take the pen, we truly start to win. In other words, God is a much better storyteller of our lives than we ever could have imagined. And I believe oftentimes it's particularly in this area when it comes to parenting, perhaps that we have the most difficult time letting go and letting God take control. Uh, so as you're listening on this message, maybe you are uh, maybe you are an empty nester and you're thinking, well, I've kind of done my job and I'm on, you know, my children out of the home. Well, I believe there's some opportunity for you as well. Maybe you are uh, a single in your single season and you've yet to uh, man thinking about being a parent. It's a distance so far in the distance. You haven't started thinking about that yet. Well, I believe even more so this message is perhaps for you. And maybe you are in that stage of life where uh, you've been trying. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, um, I believe uh, even in the midst of it, uh, one, I know God is still working and I believe he has a way he's going to encourage you prayerfully with this message. And then there are some of us, we're in the thick of it right now. Um, and life is busy. We don't know if we're coming or going because we're trying to, uh, it's like, man, it's, we don't know when was the last time we just had a moment like this. Yeah, silence. You, know, you didn't even recognize what that was because it's been so long. But you can't even remember when the last time you had that moment of solitude where you could just pull apart and just do something for yourself. Well, I believe uh, this word this morning is meant to be an encouragement to you uh, as we examine this passage. The author, as we shared before, of this particular letter is uh, Solomon, perhaps one of the wisest men to ever live, second to that of Jesus, of course. And Solomon, he writes this letter. He's writing. He, he starts off just talking about how life is vain, the vanity of life without God. But then he moves, seems like, into this not necessarily appropriate uh, transition, verses three through five. But when you think about the heartbeat and what Solomon is bringing to bear, he's really kind of helping us to understand, helping his audience understand, one, the value of children, but also how God is sovereign, even in the child rearing process, how he wants his hand to undergird that process. And so this morning, as we examine this passage, I think it's, it's appropriate for us to think uh, from our parenting. Uh, when we think about our parenting in the days or years to come for those who are not there yet, how how do we make sure we yield that process? We live surrendered to the Lord, even when it comes to our parenting. So there's a couple of thoughts I want to give you this morning that we can draw from this passage. And then I want to end uh, with a unique time, giving you some time to really put into pl play, uh, practice um, some application in your own life as you parent or maybe as you prepare to become a parent one day. Or maybe in that phase of life where you're trying to be a good grandparent or you're trying to still lead adult children. I want to give us an opportunity to kind of put some planning into place. So so bear with me as we walk through the passage. The first thing I have us to see in the in the passages first, uh, he makes it very clear about the gift. And I want you to comprehend this, even though you hear this, you've probably heard this before. But I love it. He says, man, in essence, he's saying you are a gift. He says children are a gift. The fact that all of us, we were once children. Uh, nobody skipped that process and just came into this world as an adult, ready to lead and take care of themselves. But at one point in time, we were all children. And look what he says. He says children are, are a gift. In the world of the words, they are not a coincidence. They are not an accident. They are not uh, just a happen of, of happenstance, but um, they are very much a gift from the Lord. 
Um, and that's beautiful because today, for many may not be aware that this is the uh, Sanctity of Life Sunday, where uh, we set apart time to really just look at, unfortunately, the tragedy um, of abortion and how, how rampant it is uh, in our country, but literally around the world, how many babies are aborted through from day to day. And so as I think about that and thinking about this passage, was well, Solomon and the Lord would have us understand it at every phase at the moment of of that child being a seed in the mother's womb. They are a gift. And so my brother, my sister, I don't know where you stand on the spectrum of this whole uh, of, of life. The fact that you are here, it means that you are a gift no matter what you are going through right now, no matter what you experience, no matter <clears throat> how hard life is right now. The fact that God allowed you to be born, you are a miraculous gift. And um. I think if, if you don't hear anything else from this message, I want you to, to really hold that in your heart that right now where you are, no matter what you're, what you're facing, no matter what you've come through, no matter what you're going through right now, God would still say you are a gift. But that's also important because those of us who are in parents or parents, sometimes we don't feel that way when we look at our children. Sometimes we think about where they are. We think about some of the mistakes they made. We, we, we think about the chaos and the stressors we're feeling in the moment. And we forget that, man, they are a gift. Like God, of all the parents he could have chosen, of all, all, the, all the households they could have been born in, of all the things they had to go through to get here, like, man, God was very much intentional in making certain that uh, we would see them as a gift. He gave them to us. Nobody can parent that child like you can. Nobody can shape and mold them like you can. But the challenge we must remember, especially when you're frustrated, especially when uh, they're kind of getting on your laugh nerves, especially when the house is chaotic and loud and, and you're just like, oh, cow gun, take me away. I don't know if y'all remember that commercial. When you're having that type of moment, like remember that even then they are a gift. And I've learned this. I believe oftentimes uh, some of the greatest sanctifying work in my own soul, in my own heart as a parent, it happens through my children. I see so much of, um, of what God is teaching me in my relating to them, but also just and sometimes in man, them, them working my nerves, them making me tired, some of the frustration I feel. I believe in those moments, those are moments for me to yield afresh to say, God, you know what? They belong to you and I can't do this in my own might and strength. I need your help. So remind me that they are a gift. But then the second thing we see in the passage, as we see Solomon pen these words about the beauty and blessing of children is, is this, you are either aiming or have been aimed. You are either aiming or being aimed. Look what Solomon says. He says, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are children. Uh, of one's youth. In other words, Solomon, he gives us this picture of an arrow. He says, look, uh, these, these gifts that you've been given, they are meant to be aimed. In other words, they're not meant to just always be coddled. Sometimes it's going to require discipline. Sometimes it's going to require molding and shaping. But the ultimate end, an arrow is not meant to stay uh, in, in, it's not meant to stay uh, in the quiver or in the holder. It's meant to be sent out. So in essence, he says, look, remember, uh, you're being aimed or um, you're aiming someone for those who are in that phase of life where you are parenting right here, right now. God, he's allowing you to aim those children to become uh, what he has called them to be, not what you think they should be. Yeah, you're going to have some insight. Yes, you want to encourage and point and you want to be prayerful about what God is calling them to be. But ultimately, you want to make sure you live and lead them surrendered so that God can show you and them what he's calling them to do or uh, to become. So if you have children, man, your role is to be that of a warrior where you're aiming them to where God wants them to be and where God wants them to go. And oftentimes <laughs> God has a funny way of, um, of, of shaping and directing them to go places we never thought that was never on our radar. So that is why we got to be prayerful and posture our hearts to yield uh, to what God is asking of us uh, as parents. But then also maybe you're not in that season yet. Maybe you're still uh, in that single season or maybe you're beyond that phase. Uh, I would just encourage you to know like, hey, you know what? You are still being aimed. Uh, God is still shaping you to hit the bullseye for your life. And that's a beautiful thing. Uh, I like how the words of Zig Ziglar, he says, um, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. 
In other words, you, you got to have a bullseye you're aiming at. It has to be a picture. And the ultimate bullseye they should be aiming at is to look more like Jesus uh, in their adult life than they did uh, when you first got them. And so that's a great opportunity we have as parents. So you are being aimed. Uh, and I want to encourage us to lean into that, like in every phase, every phase or season of life, like be asking the Lord, show me, God, where you're aiming me. What does it look like to hit the mark uh, of the high, Christ, high calling of Christ Jesus in this particular season of my life? Whether you're in your adult season of life or maybe in that parenting season uh, where you're raising and pointing and directing others, like what a marvelous opportunity we have to shape and aim these gifts from the Lord. Remember, they're a gift. Remember, you're being aimed or you're aiming someone. But then the third thing I have you to see is remember that the chaos is a gift. That sounds crazy, right? Chaos, a gift. Um, it is. All the loud noise, the screaming, uh, the sleepless nights, all those things. Believe it or not, God is still doing something profound in your soul, in your life and theirs. It doesn't feel like it. As a matter of fact, some of God's greatest works is, is actually performed in settings and scenes where it doesn't feel like anything great is happening. He does some of his greatest work there. Think about Isaac. Think about Abraham and Isaac and Isaac, Abraham having to go and sacrifice his son, Isaac. Didn't feel good. As a matter of fact, I'm, I can't imagine Abraham sleep much at all that night before. But him obeying the voice of the Lord in this place, this season of being extremely uncomfortable. But he said, yet God will provide himself a lamb. Uh, he was growing. God was doing something on the inside of him. And so it's in those moments uh, where we feel like, man, we feel it feels chaotic. I believe God is teaching us something profound about him. And more importantly, he's teaching us how to surrender and yield and trust him deeply. And so here he says, uh, in essence, how blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. If you think about a house full of kids, that cannot be a quiet home. It has to be a home full of quite a lot of chaos. And he says, look, that is a blessed home. All that noise, all that yelling, all that screaming, all that fighting and fussing, all that chaos. Man, God is saying, I've blessed that in spite of how it feels, in spite of how it sounds, in spite of how it smells. Even God is saying, look, I'm blessing because that is just who I am. He says that man is blessed. That woman is blessed. Now, that does not mean in order to have a lot, in order to be blessed, you got to have a lot of kids. That's not the implication. Of course, we think about an ancient Hebrew context. They really saw uh, the more sons or children you had, particularly even sons in that context, the more blessed you were by the Lord. And they use this, this interesting uh, picture that was very relevant during that day. He says they will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. Uh, in the ancient world, at the gate, a lot of the business was handled. Uh, deals were made. Um, relationships were formed. And it's saying like this man with all the sons, he's going to have a he's going to have these individuals who are going to have his back when it comes to time to to advance uh, the family's cause at the city gate. And it's just a picture ultimately of our chief uh, elder brother, Jesus Christ, who is a true and better Solomon. How like now we have all these siblings, uh, these kingdom siblings we've been connected to because of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Um, but trust me, you are being aimed. And I just want to invite you to really pray and ask the Lord to show you what does that look like in your day to day life right here, right now? Who is he aiming you to influence and make an impact upon? Of course, if you have children, we know you start there. If you're in your single season, guess what? Believe it or not, he's brought some people, some younger siblings or younger friends or, or individuals who are, who, are, who are maybe behind or better yet, not as far as you are in life, that he'd have you to impart your wisdom and insight to. And I think the, the, the challenge and opportunity for us is, will we take advantage of those opportunities? So I shared I was going to end with a very practical opportunity for this. I want to encourage you now to take some time uh, for those who have uh, children in the household. Hey, take some time to think what would it look like for you all to worship God as a family? How can you be more intentional there? Because the only way you become a more a better skillful warrior and leveraging and sending them out will be you being very intentional uh, with shaping and, and molding them to become what God has called them to be. Um, I think what a great opportunity we have around the dinner table or on the car ride to be able to impart truth to our children. Do you have a plan or are you just winging it? I would encourage you to put together a plan. Maybe it's not five days a week or seven days a week, but maybe it's one or two days a week. You can start saying, hey, these two days are going to be 
at home or starting day off in prayer in God's word, singing a hymn. Hey, let the children choose a song. How fun would that be letting them lead you in a song or lead a Bible study? Uh, just tremendous opportunities you have. Maybe you're in your single season. I want to encourage you to think like, what does it look like when God or if God decides to bring you that spouse and you have a family, how can you start becoming that person now so you can lead your family later? Uh, what are those habits you need to form? What are those things? What would it look like for you to parent? Like, how, what would that time look like? That's a great interview question as you're thinking about maybe going into that next phase of life with a potential spouse if you are in a courting relationship. Hey, what would you say um, shaping our children? What's most important to you? Um, and maybe you're in that phase or maybe your children are in the adult phase. How can you love and still lead and shape them uh, even though they're not under your roof? Uh, maybe it's a matter of writing them notes. Maybe it's just letting them know how proud you are. Maybe it's, you know, periodically sending them a verse and letting them know, hey, I prayed for you this morning. It's so many ways we can touch and continue to shape them so that as they're sent out, they won't hit nothing as Zig Ziglar says, but they'll hit the bullseye that God has written for their life. All right. Well, thank you all. Take some time now. This was a shorter message, so you can take these next 20 or 30, 40 minutes, hour, however long you have. Just say, hey, just have some time and worship together as a family or maybe with a friend or just thinking about what your future could look like uh, as that husband, uh, as that wife, as that dad or mom in the days and years to come. God bless you all. Thanks for tuning in. And I pray God's blessings over your family. Be
become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Oh, we worship you, all your goodness, your presence, Lord. So Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are well. Flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Hey, Midtown Bridge family, it's still time to join us for our time of prayer and fasting. But well, we started on this past Monday and we'll continue on until next Sunday. And so join us uh, each morning at 7 o'clock a.m. Uh, for a time of prayer as we're also walking through um, uh, the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. So, hey, it's not too late. You may have missed this morning, but you can join us, Lord willing, uh, tomorrow morning uh, at 7 o'clock a.m. And we'll continue on through next Sunday uh, morning at 7 o'clock a.m. You can go to our website, uh, click on that link. It'll take you right into that Zoom link. You don't have to turn your camera on if you don't feel comfortable. That's perfectly fine, but we want you to join us in a time of prayer. All right, we're praying that God will give us clarity uh, of what he asked us to put our heart and resources to this year, but also praying for unity. And uh, we're praying that God will impress upon our hearts uh, these beatitudes that they won't just be empty words, but they'll actually be um, the life-giving presence of God at work in our hearts and through our lives. God bless you. Thanks again for tuning in. And our Lord willing, we'll be together this coming next Sunday. All right. Have a great day. Enjoy this time of rest. <laughs>